What kind of weather can break satellites, disrupt flights, and mess up telegraph communications on the ground? Space weather! Hey guys, Trace here with your DNews Weekly Space Update. Does the phrase solar storm sound freaky to you? Because at the moment we are in a period of higher solar activity. Since sunspots were first observed by Chinese astronomers in the 4th century BC, scientists have been studying our sun. Today we know it runs on an 11 year cycle with periods of high and low activity. High activity means increased radiation levels, production of cosmic and charged particles, and the occasional CME or coronal mass ejection. ejection. During times of high solar activity, Activity, the Earth's magnetosphere is really important, as those particles tossed away by the sun could be dangerous. Instead, that wave of particles reacts with the magnetic field in our upper atmosphere, causing fantastic aurora all over the globe. Not a bad deal, really. These solar flares, geomagnetic storms, and electromagnetic radiation doesn't just give us pretty shows. When a CME happens, it releases billions of tons of material. NASA says it's equivalent to the energy of thousands of nuclear bombs exploding at the same time. During the Great Solar Storm of 1859, the most advanced tech on Earth was the telegraph. And when a huge wave of these charged particles slammed into our atmosphere, it could only stop some of them. And as a result, telegraphs across the United States and Europe shorted out, and some of them even caught fire. Thanks, son. Then in 1989, it happened again. This time, the blast wave from our happy little sun overloaded the power grid across a giant part of Canada. But as soon as the wave of particles passed us, the lights flipped back on. At the time, the space shuttle Discovery was in orbit, and even it had a few mysterious pressure readings. Last year, a massive CME paired with an Earth-directed solar flare caused airlines to reroute flights off the top of the globe because of radio communication breakdowns. Flares like those can also electrically charge pipelines that carry oil across our planet, disrupt satellite television and GPS, and even though they're shielded, cause multiple satellite failures. A new MIT study explored 26 satellite failures over 16 years. Space weather didn't cause the satellites to break down completely, they just didn't work as well due to an electrical charge buildup. Researchers compared the problem to a breaking part in your car. Although unprepared satellites could be destroyed, because of that large amount of solar energy. Events like the Great Solar Storm of 1859 and the 1989 Quebec blackout could easily happen again if we're not safer. But we've been rather lucky. NASA has learned a lot about the sun thanks to the Solar Dynamic Observatory, or SDO, which launched in 2010. Today, we have ample warning times for solar storms and can explore why they occur and when. So next time you look up at the sun with sunglasses on or with a special device, remember, it's nice that it gives us heat and light and whatever, but it also could try to destroy us. So what do you think of this space weather? Freak you out? Or does it make you love space that much more? Tell us about it and we will see you next Friday for another DNews Weekly Space Update.